Welcome to another episode of the Distributed Data Show brought to you by Datastax Academy, where we bring you the latest news and interview technical experts to help you succeed in building large-scale distributed systems. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Distributed Data Show. I am technical evangelist Luke Tillman here in the studio with Dwihai Doan. Dwihai, welcome. Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, so Dwihai, funny enough, just got off a plane and I was like, surely you want to go to the hotel and maybe relax, you know, take a nap, something like that. But he was like, no, I want to talk about secondary indexes yeah. in Cassandra. It's my topic. <laughs> He's a crazy man. There's no stopping him. So uh, Dwihai is here and we're going to talk today, uh, like I just said, about uh, secondary indexes. So Dwihai, just real quick, um, give us like a sentence or two just for anybody who hasn't uh, seen the show before. Uh, tell us just kind of a little bit about yourself and what it is you do at Datastax. Okay, so yeah, I am a technical advocate. I'm based in Europe. My main location is Paris. And basically what I'm doing is to help people implementing uh, this Stax Enterprise and also helping developers with their questions about Apache Kassana. Yeah, so you're a very, you're a regular on the, uh, like on the speaking circuit over there. You do yeah. tons of conferences over in Europe, yep. Okay, so let's, let's talk about secondary indexes. So maybe set the stage by, um, you know, somebody that's listening to this, if, just start by explaining maybe what is a secondary index and why do we, why do we need secondary indexes when we're talking about uh, Cassandra or, or, or DSE? So um, if you are a newcomer to Apache Cassandra, uh, you already know that uh, we used to tell people, uh, use the primary key to access your data, right? This is a good, a way to model your data. The problem with primary key is it's not very flexible. And sometimes you, you want to be able to query your data. I don't know, for example, you have an user table. Uh, you want to query your user by their age or by their country or whatever. So secondary index is here for convenience. And I want to warn people uh, that are coming from the relational database world um, secondary index in Cassandra is not for performance. They are more for convenience of query. Okay. Um, so, I, you know, I, I agree with you 100%. One thing that people, like especially if they come from the relational database world, like secondary index has a certain connotation, like it means a certain thing to them. And we're very used to being able to just kind of put a, put a secondary index on anything in a relational yeah. database. And because it's a single machine, you know, we, a lot of times it actually perform, we get performance improvements when we do queries, but that's not how it works in Cassandra. So why don't we talk about how it actually does work in Cassandra and maybe start with what's going on at the cluster level with secondary indexes. How are they kind of distributed around, um, around the cluster when we're talking about multiple machines? So um, to start with the basics, you know that um, on a normal table, your data, are distributed across the cluster using the partitioner. So we apply a hash function on your partition uh, key, right? Uh, with a secondary index, it is totally different. What is different is the index data is staying on the same machine as your base data. So we are not using the partitioner to distribute the index data, right? So how does it work? Uh, for example, let's say we have a table user again, and we want to index the country of each user. So of course, if we talk about US user, you have US user are uh, distributed on every node because the hash is applied on the user ID. And it means that on each node, you have some index pointing to the American user. So now if I want to query, say, uh, give me uh, like all user from America, from the US, I need to hit all machines. And imagine you have a cluster of 99 machines, for example, you have to. So of course you don't have to hit all of them because of the replication factor. Usually let's say you have replication factor of three, yeah, normally you only need to hit 33 nodes, right? 99 divided by 3. But still, it's a lot of machines to query. And in fact, th this is the, the very, very um, basic way to work with, okay, uh, I can fire 33 queries in parallel, 
to hit 33 nodes. But in fact, we have a more involved algorithm to avoid querying so many nodes at the same time. So the idea is you, you issue a select with a second index with some limits of, so let's say, limits 100. The algorithm will start with, OK, we will start querying, I don't know, three or four nodes, fetch, get the data back. Do we have enough data? Do we have 100 American user? No? OK, we will start sending a second round of query to hit, I don't know, nine extra nodes, and so on. So every time a new round of query is started, we increase the number of machines. Right. Because, of course, the idea is to, to limit the number of rounds of query to the minimum. Right. But that's the basic idea of the algorithm. Okay, so what you're saying is basically the as far as where the secondary indexes are stored around the cluster, right. uh, like each node basically has a, has a copy of the secondary index, and that secondary index only contains the data that's already that's on that node. Exactly. Based on how it was basically based on the partitioner, based on how it was partitioned around the, and then we have to go do these sort of scatter gather yeah, exactly. type queries if we do a query that's only on on a secondary index. Okay. So I'm with you so far. So uh, let's maybe drill down a little bit, a little bit more mm -hmm. into what does that actually look like when we look at a single node of um, of DSE or or Cassandra. Um, what are the implementations, sort of like uh, almost like storage kind of implementation details of um, of secondary indexes on disk and on each individual node? Okay, so you, we are now going one level down. We are talking about storage engine level. So uh, what you should know is in Cassandra, every time you have a mutation, like an update, an insert, a delete, uh, there's a hook to the secondary index. Okay. So the idea is to keep um, the update of the base data and the index um, as, I would say, consistent as possible. I would not say atomic. Why? Because we are writing to two different files, right? Base data are written into SS table. Secondary index, depending on the implementation, can be written on different data structure. So to guarantee atomicity of write is pretty hard. But at least the fact that the, the updates are done, are batched together in a single node, it reduces the, the chance of inconsistency. So this is the reason why, why Cassandra, are you saying this is the reason why we co-locate yeah, the yeah, secondary index yeah. with the actual data. Yeah. That's yeah. Okay, uh, the, the the decision is not uh, like a, uh, we we know that if we collocate, we uh, we we cannot scale uh, a lot, but the gain is in cons uh, the the consistency we get. Right. Right. Now, uh, in terms of implementation, uh, there are many possible implementation for secondary index. So we have. Uh, first, the native implementation, which is basically a reverse index. So we create um, a table in the background. The partition key of the table is the value of the index. For example, in my in my scenario, it is the, the country of uh, the user, US, UK, FR, whatever. And each clustering column will contain uh, the, the whole primary key of the user being indexed. So it just stores the primary key value next to the Ex next to the index, sort of the key of the index. Exactly, and with this kind of design, uh, the only thing you can do is to query by equality. So give me uh, all user from US, or give me all user who's uh, who are like uh, ten years old or twenty years old. But you cannot have range query. Give me all user between twenty and thirty years old. Not not possible because you cannot have range query on partition key. Uh, recently, we have uh, another an another implementation of secondary index called SASI, SS stable attached secondary index. Now the the new idea is to stick together the life cycle of the base data and the index data structure. So every time you flush your data in an SS table. SASE will also flush its own data structure on disk. Okay. And so the data structure is just an optimized B3, right? And um, the new idea here is because we have a close relationship between the SS table and the SASE index file, we can, and because SS table are by nature immutable, we can store the exact offset 
of the row of the matching row okay. in the um, SAS index to get back to the the original SS table to be able to read, right? Okay. And we have also all the uh, implementation based on uh, Apache Solar or Lucene. So we have DSE Search, which is using uh, Solar and Lucene index underneath. And of course, again, we are only storing primary keys of matching rows in Lucene. We don't store the, the whole data. So you've all these implementations that you've mentioned, like the three, th the three you sort of just discussed, uh, native secondary indexes, SASE secondary indexes, and then search type secondary indexes with Lucene. None of them are actually, uh, they're all storing basically pointers back to the yeah, original exactly. SS table file. So is that sort of like, is that sort of the reason why you said at the beginning that uh, that secondary indexes in Cassandra, they're not really for performance, they're more for convenience because how is performance actually going to be impacted by sort of this decision to... Yeah, so uh, uh, on the ground of performance, as I said before, the fact that you need to scatter gather on the cluster la la layer, so it's already slower than to have a, to, to contact just a single node for query. And on the storage and engine layer, when you are querying by secondary index, you need two passes on disk. One pass to read the index data structure itself, Right. to get the primary key or the, the offset, right. and another pass to read the original data right. out of SS table. And uh, that's the, the reason that which explained that access by primary key will always, always be faster than access by secondary index. Because you don't need the two passes, you don't need to do yes. two reads essentially off of disk. Exactly. So why don't we, if, if what we're storing in these secondary index structures is pointers back to the original SS table files, like mm -hmm. sort of offsets. Why don't we actually just duplicate data in these in these index data structures? I know relational databases have done this in certain types of indexes for a while, where they sort of just duplicate the data. Why mm -hmm. don't we Why don't we do that in the secondary index so that we can avoid the whole second pass and, yeah. and performance penalty? So I, I get your point. So I, I was thinking about this idea uh, a while back ago. And the, the main difficulty is if you start duplicating data, uh, what are we talking about? You duplicate your data, okay? But uh, then you need to duplicate also the timestamp. Okay. And then you need to duplicate also the tombstone. Okay. Because if you don't go back to, um, to read uh, the, the data from the SS table, you need a way to, to solve conflicts, right? Because we, we all know that in Cassandra, we are a masterless architecture, so we are we have an um, eventually consistent system, and all the inconsistency at right time are solved at read time right. using timestamp. So it means that now that you d when you duplicate data into your index structure, you need also to apply the same uh, conflict resolution algorithm last right win. It means that you need to re-implement the last right win logic for each index implementation. So imagine you have the main last right win logic for the, the, the base data of Cassandra. You have last right win logic for the native secondary index, for one for SASE, one for DC search. It means that you are taking a huge risk of regression because you are duplicating the same logic everywhere. Sure. This is very risky in terms of programming. Sure, and then also as, as far as like how do you, you have to figure out then how do you store things like a tombstone when you're talking yeah, exactly. about like how would you store a tombstone in a SASE index or in a, in a Lucene index? I don't know, but yeah, yeah right. It's it, it just mm -hmm. another field just on extra bytes, uh, but still uh, a lot of work to do because then we are not just talking about um, resolving conflict at real time. Think about compaction, right? Sure. Yep. Because compaction also need to use this last right win to merge data together. Yep. So y you need to also to, to accommodate with compaction. How do you compact your index data structure and so on and so on. Yep. Okay, so uh, now that we've kind of gone over like why this is more a convenience thing than a, mm -hmm. than a performance, uh, sort of the performance thing that it is in a relational database. Is there a way you can get around having to pay that sort of performance penalty of the of the two two passes on disk that you get with the secondary index? Yeah, it's, uh, the we, we have introduced uh, matrice view for that. So the idea of matrice view, view is to have a way of indexing your data without the the performance hit, right? Okay. And the the, the idea is very basic. 
you have a reverse index like uh, the, the primary key uh, of your matrix view will uh, contain the column to be indexed and of course you can only query by equality okay. but now the, the the advantage of matrix view is every time you query the view you only hit one machine and because we are using the the normal partitioner to distribute the data now the problem with matrix view is consistency why because whenever because when you you write data in into your base table the um, matrix view data may not stay on the same machine because of the partition no? sure the partition may it has different keys so exactly it, it may distribute it's going to end up distributing your data differently than exactly than the base table was and you know that w whenever you introduce the network into your equation <laughs> you are opening a can of worms yeah never trust the network right Isn't yeah <laughs> what happened in case of uh, failure how we can we detect failure how can we solve failure and that's the main reason why today Matrix view is not stable yet and we are dedicating like uh, two full-time engineers to stabilize them and to bug fix yeah so materialized views are a feature that has been out since what of cassandra 3.0 was 3 yeah, 3 .0? yeah, 3 .0, yeah. 3 .0, yeah. <laughs> but um uh, for a lot of people out in production you you've heard they kind of treat it as an experimental feature yeah because of the uh, it's not stable yet yeah 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 Okay. Well, hopefully that's something that's going to get uh, fixed. Like yeah, it sounds like there's, yeah, there's, it's definitely been, um, it's definitely been prioritized in uh, in open source Cassandra. So um, hopefully for everybody watching and listening out there, uh, maybe you understand a little bit more about how uh, secondary indexes in Cassandra work, not only at the cluster level, but also sort of some of the different storage implementations that are available. Um, and if somebody wanted to learn more, like do you have any suggestions on where somebody might go to learn more? I know you blog on some of this yeah, stuff sometimes. So, yeah, so I have written uh, a really detailed blog post about secondary index architecture, cluster level, uh, storage engine level. I also give the, the, the complex algorithm, you know, to query uh, the, uh, by multiple rounds. So they can go on my uh, personal blog, so www.duanguihai.com slash blog. Cool. And they can find uh, the blog post there. Awesome. Okay, well, thank you to Dui Hai for thank being you. here all the way from Paris. Uh, and thank you for watching and or listening to another episode of the Distributed Data Show. We will see you next time. Thank you for joining us again for the Distributed Data Show. We love your feedback, so go to the Distributed Data Show page on Datastax Academy and tell us what you think. You can also find us on the Datastax Academy YouTube channel or find our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you get great podcasts. While you're there, make sure and subscribe so you don't miss a single episode.